Hi guys, what's up? My name is Matti Sulonto and in this video I'm gonna give you my 5 tips for better JPEGs. But before I go into the topic of the day, please consider subscribing to my channel and tap also the bell icon down there so you'll get notified whenever I post a new video. Advanced photographers, myself included, keep telling you on and on how important it is to shoot RAW because RAW allows you better post-processing possibilities and uh, RAW uh, captures all the data, etc. etc. However, there can be many reasons for somebody not to want to shoot RAW. One reason could be that um, if you're a beginner, maybe you don't want to get involved with the RAW quite yet because you are just learning the basics of the photography. There can be other reasons like a new camera, for example. In my previous video, I was shooting street with the Panasonic GX880 and when I'm recording this, Lightroom still doesn't support the RAW files from this camera. So I had to shoot JPEG because I still wanted to shoot something. I wanted to open the pictures and I wanted to share the pictures with you guys in my previous video. It could also be that you're just not interested in any of the post-processing stuff and you just want to get it right in camera and then you might as well shoot JPEG. And here are my five tips to get a little bit better JPEGs. Tip number one, learn to know the photo styles on your camera. On Lumix cameras they are called photo styles, on some other cameras they might be called photo styles or picture styles or whatever. The main thing is that to learn to know those um, photo styles and then pick one or two of your favorites and stick with those and learn to know how they work under different uh, situations. The reason I'm suggesting you should stick only to one or two is to learn how they work and that's how you get the best out of them. If you keep uh, switching the photo style every time you take a picture, you never really get to learn how that particular photo style works under different uh, situations. I'm not suggesting you would stick with one or two photo styles for the rest of your life, but I just think it's a good idea to learn one or two photo styles really well and then you can move on and switch to another photo style if you want something else. Lumix cameras and all other cameras as well have many different default photo styles. But you can also customize the default photo styles and save them uh, as custom photo styles so you can use them later. I personally like a little bit like punchy contrasty look in my images, so when I was using the GX880 camera in my previous video, I made a custom photo style on this camera and I used that all the time. And here's the custom photo style I created for the GX880. I increased uh, contrast to plus two, reduced the sharpness to minus one, reduced the noise reduction to minus one and increased the color saturation to plus one. Tip number two, learn to use the highlight shadow settings on your Lumix camera. Almost all Lumix cameras have something called highlight shadow settings. The highlight shadow is a tone curve tool that you can use to finalize or, or fine-tune your JPEG output. There are already several default highlight shadow settings saved on your Lumix camera, but you can also create your own and save it as a custom highlight shadow settings and use it whenever you feel like using it. The highlight shadow setting is a great tool to finalize and fine-tune your JPEG output in addition to your selected photo style. Setting number three. Use auto white balance to get correct colors. The reason I'm suggesting 
The auto white balance is that usually in most situations it's gonna give you correct colors. And if you're using auto white balance you never forget to change the setting when you go for example from inside to outside or outside to inside where the color temperature is probably a bit different. If you forget to change your white balance settings and the colors come out really wrong, they can be really really hard to correct in post and uh, one of the reasons you are shooting JPEG is not to do any post processing in the first place. You can also fine tune the auto white balance, how it works. For example, if you constantly think your images turn out too blue, you can fine tune the auto white balance towards orange yellow and that's gonna correct the blue cast that you're getting in your shots. On some Lumix cameras there are two or even three auto white balance settings. I personally think the regular normal auto white balance will give me the best colors. Those two extra settings are useful if you are shooting under artificial lighting and you may want to try them and see how they work. Sometimes though it can be interesting to experiment with uh, the wrong white balance settings on purpose. So I suggest you try that and experiment a little bit but in general photography I recommend using the auto white balance setting to make sure you get your colors right in camera. Setting number four, nail your exposure. Nailing the exposure is important every time but especially if you are shooting JPEG it's 110% important that you nail the exposure. Especially if you overexpose and you, and you blow out the highlights, there's nothing you can do. Those highlights are gone and uh, the results are not gonna look that good. If you underexpose just a little bit, it's easy to brighten the image a bit in post if you feel that it needs some brightening. Just make sure you are not overexposing and you nail your exposure. There are two great ways to make sure that you nail the exposure. The first and most commonly used is the histogram, which will tell you how the tonality is divided in the picture area. The other one is uh, the zebra pattern, which I prefer. I think it's better and more accurate than the histogram. I even have a video of it over there. If you are interested, please take a look. The video is for raw exposing. So if you watch the video and uh, want to use the zebra, please set your zebra to 100% if you are shooting JPEGs and make sure that you see the zebra pattern only on the brightest areas of the image where you still want to see some detail. And the tip number five, double check the sharpness and the noise reduction settings. On Lumix cameras, every photo style has a, a sharpness and a, a noise reduction setting. I personally think the default settings are a little bit too strong to my taste, so every time I select a picture style, I reduce the sharpness by one notch and also the noise reduction by one notch, both to about minus one. By reducing the sharpness a little bit, I think my pictures end up looking more natural because over sharpened images don't look good to me. And by reducing the noise reduction setting, I may get a little bit more grainy or uh, noisy looking images at high ISO setting, but I prefer that over the little bit mushy look that I get uh, with the default settings. But I really strongly suggest you experiment a little bit with all these settings because what I just told you is what I like and uh, what you like may not be what I like. And talking about your preferences, is there something I forgot or is there something that I should have mentioned and uh, do you have a special kind of settings or preferences 
for JPEG uh, uh, shooting, please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, but before you go, please take a look at these two videos and I'll see you next time.